Hello everyone, and welcome back to Worked Heat Transfer Examples. This will be our first example in internal convection. Internal convection happens when you have flow in a channel or a pipe, and the boundary layers, the thermal or the hydrodynamic boundary layers, interfere with each other. So the heat transfer behavior is somewhat different. Our first problem, we're considering an electric demand water heater that is to heat water from 15 to 45 degrees Celsius at a given flow rate. The water heater consists of a 10 meter long, three centimeter diameter pipe with a uniform heat flux. We have to find the needed heat flux and the pipe surface temperature at the exit of the demand water heater. If the flow rate is increased to 20 liters per minute, what would be the new pipe surface temperature? So if we were going to draw this problem out, it would look something like this. We have temperature of the fluid coming in of 15 degrees. And at least initially, our volumetric flow rate is one liter per minute. The length of our pipe is 10 meters. It has a diameter of three centimeters. We know that there's a constant heat flux, but we don't know what it is. And we know that the outlet temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. The three things we need to find are A, the heat flux, B, the temperature on the surface at the outlet of the pipe when the volumetric flow rate is one liter per minute, and then that same temperature when the volumetric flow rate is increased to 20 liters per minute. The assumptions that we'll make for this problem include that the pipe has a constant heat flux, that the fluid and material properties are constant, that the system is at steady state, and that there are no losses to the surroundings. Again, we'll rely on our convection flow chart, but it's been slightly modified for internal convection, although the general process is still the same. We'll understand geometry and boundary conditions, look for relevant properties, calculate our Reynolds number, choose an appropriate convection correlation, solve for the heat transfer coefficient, and finish the problem. Looking at the geometry and boundary conditions of this problem, we find that we're looking at an internal flow. We have constant heat flux at the boundary, and we have flow moving through a round pipe. Eventually, we'll need to find what the entrance length of the pipe is, and then we'll use that information, along with whether the flow is laminar or turbulent, to find an appropriate Nusselt number cor correlation. Next, we'll determine relevant properties at an appropriate temperature. For internal convection, the appropriate temperature is the average temperature between the inlet and outlet of the pipe. Here, we take T inlet plus T outlet divided by two, and we find that that average temperature is 30 degrees. That's about 303 degrees Kelvin. But because I don't want to interpolate, I'm going to pick 300 degrees Kelvin. You could pick 305 degrees Kelvin, which is also a line on table 8.6, and I bet we'd get similar answers. I find the density, which is one over the specific volume. I find the viscosity. I find the thermal conductivity, the Prandtl number, and finally, the specific heat. Remember that these properties are related to the fluid. I'll use these properties to calculate a Reynolds number. Reynolds number is given by the equation here. In this case, I don't have the velocity in the pipe, but I know the volumetric flow rate, and I can find the cross-sectional area. I put that information into my calculator, being sure to deal with my units properly, remembering that one liter is e or there are a thousand liters per meter cubed in 60 seconds in a minute. I simplify my equation a little bit, and then I find a Reynolds number of 824.4. Now this Reynolds number is less than 2,300, 
And that means that the flow in this case is laminar. So we need to look to see if it's fully developed. For laminar flow, the entry regions are different hydrodynamically and thermally. For the hydrodynamic case, I use this equation and find that the entrance region is 1.236 meters. So my flow is fully developed most of the way. For the thermal case, I take the entry region for the hydrodynamic case and multiply by the Prandtl number. Here, I see that my entry length is 7.21 meters. So it's fully developed at the end, but it's developing for most of the pipe. Now, I can choose an appropriate convection correlation. In this case, I know that my system is not turbulent. Now, I have to look at the boundary condition. I remember that I have constant heat flux, so the Nusselt number is equal to 4.36. Now I can solve for the heat transfer coefficient. I use the definition of the Nusselt number and my correlation, which in this case is only a constant, to find an expression for the heat transfer coefficient. I know all of these values, so I can plug them into my calculator and find that the heat transfer coefficient is 89.1 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now that I know my heat transfer coefficient, I can use it to find the surface temperature at the end of the pipe. I know that at x equal L, the heat flux coming in through the sidewall is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the local surface temperature and the temperature at the outlet of the pipe. I can rearrange this equation to find the temperature of the surface at the outlet of the pipe. Unfortunately, I don't yet know the heat flux. I can find this heat flux by doing a first law analysis on the fluid in the pipe. To do that, I know that all the heat that comes in through the walls of my pipe goes into the fluid. Here, I'll do the calculation to find the heat flux. I can use my first law equation to isolate for heat flux. I don't know the mass flow rate, m dot, so I can take the density multiplied by the volumetric flow rate. I put some information into my calculator, and I find that the heat flux is 2,210 watts per meter squared. Now I can get back to finding the temperature on the surface. We isolated this equation before, but when we didn't have the heat flux, we couldn't find the surface temperature. But now, we know the heat flux. So I can put that information into my equation and find a value for the surface temperature of the pipe at the end of the pipe. But what happens when we increase the volumetric flow rate to 20 liters per minute? So we increase the volumetric flow rate by a factor of 20. First, I can look at that same first law analysis that I just did, but now my mass flow rate is 20 times higher. I can put some numbers into my calculator and find that my heat flux has gone up by a factor of 20, up to 44,163 watts per meter squared. It takes a lot more heat to get the same temperature difference when I increase the flow through the pipe. I'll use my properties to calculate my Reynolds number. Remember that my volumetric flow rate has gone up by a factor of 20, so I can take my old Reynolds number at one liter per minute and multiply by 20 now that the flow rate is 20 liters per minute. Now I find that the Reynolds number is 16,480. This means that the Reynolds number is now telling us that the flow is turbulent. I still need to see if it's fully developed. So for turbulent flows, both the hydrodynamic and thermal entrance regions are about the same length at 10 diameters into the pipe. I do some math and I found that the entrance region is 0.3 meters. So both boundary layers are fully developed most of the way into the pipe. 
I have to choose a different Nusselt number correlation now that the flow is turbulent. Because it's not laminar, I know it's not these two correlations. I'm also going to assume that the inner wall of the pipe is smooth, so I'm left with this correlation, but I need to figure out if I'm heating the fluid or cooling it down. In this case, T surface is bigger than Tm, so we're using the surface of the pipe to heat the fluid. In that case, my coefficient n is equal to 0 0.4 instead of 0 0.3. I have an expression for Nusselt number. I know my Reynolds number and my Prandtl number. I put those into my equation and I find that my Nusselt number has increased to 110. I can use the definition for Nusselt number to find an equation for heat transfer coefficient. I put some numbers into my calculator and I find that H is now 2,249 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now that I know the new heat transfer coefficient, I can use it to find the temperature at the end of the pipe at 20 liters per minute. Symbolically, my solution looks the same, but I have a new value for heat flux and a new value for heat transfer coefficient. I put those numbers into my calculator and I find that the temperature of the pipe at the end of the pipe, in this case, is almost 65 degrees Celsius. So now you know the goings on of heat transfer, at least until next class. That message is from my daughter, Gabrielle, and I'll see you next time on Worked Heat Transfer Examples.